Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, I want to talk about the number one brain focus tip. If you have any lack of focus or brain fog, this video is for you. And it has to do with something that's related to blood sugars, okay? When the blood sugars go high, you have a whole series of symptoms, okay, that relate to cognitive function and your brain. When the blood sugars go low, you have a whole series of additional symptoms that can occur. Let's just kind of talk about the difference first. So high blood sugar, and that would be mainly diabetics or pre-diabetics, um, brain fog, headaches, loss of memory and focus, vision issues, your vision starts going, absent-mindedness, um, things like um, you go in a room and you're like, okay, what did I go in here for? Drowsy, that's for high sugar. Mainly it's going to be sleepy though. You're going to like want to take a nap and uh, try to go to school. Try to study when, you're, when your blood sugars are high. It's almost impossible. And then we have low blood sugars. And even diabetics, they can have high and low depending on if they're taking their medication and it drops too low. Okay, low blood sugars, forgetfulness, anxiety from worry to panic attacks, nervous, irritable, highly critical, restlessness, depression, confusion, OCD. I would venture to say over 50% of the mental disorders that a lot of psychiatrists use are related to blood sugars, but they never look at the blood sugar issue at all. Instead, you put on a medication, unfortunately. But it really does affect the brain because the brain needs uh, fuel, okay? It could run on sugar fuel. It can also run on ketones. We'll get into that in a second, but the point is this. Blood sugar uh, issues are related to consuming too much sugar, that's one thing. To re consuming too much refined carbohydrate. Um, the worst advice for a diabetic or anyone, for that matter, is to have five small meals a day and spread out and have snacks because every time you eat, you spike insulin. So insulin is the issue, and there's a condition called insulin resistance. If you watch my videos, you, you pretty much know all about it. If you don't, click the link below because that's very important. But here's, a, here's an interesting situation. You, you see these commercials on uh, people being tired and consuming a, an energy drink or a Snickers bar. All you're doing is you're temporarily for a minute spiking, and then boom, you end up with brain fog maybe five minutes later. So what happens is uh, over time when you do that is you have this, this blood sugar that um, the door that opens the blood sugar into the brain is insulin. So that's the hormone that regulates that sugar. And over time, that door becomes resistant to sugar. So it, need, it takes more and more and more sugar to create that effect. And so in other words, your body is resisting it. So basically, consuming sugar starves your body of sugar fuel over time. Okay, and it takes 10 years for a pre-diabetic or insulin resistant client to turn into a diabetic. So this can happen below the radar for many, many years. The problem in the medical community is that they don't really recognize uh, hypoglycemia, for example, unless it shows up on a blood test. And they're ma mainly using several tests like um, a, a, a fasting glucose test. Well, what they should do is check uh, a fasting insulin test, which is a lot better, and that's gonna show the subclinical issues because we want to know what's happening to that insulin, okay? Now, here's the point. The point is over time, um, your brain becomes um, less sharp, uh, more foggy, and it becomes more sensitive to sugar. And you might not connect the dots at first. You're just going along and you're eating the regular things and you're, you're wondering why you're just, you're losing your cognitive function. So I'm going to show you what to do to get it back and fast. It's the simplest thing, but you really need to realize that it is a blood sugar problem, even though it might not show up on a blood test. And, and that's probably why when you eat sugar, you feel better temporarily, but then you crash and burn. So we, we constantly are trying to raise the sugar up when it's kind of coming down. Um, but your brain would be much better if it ran on a different fuel source, and, uh, and it's called ketones. And to do that, you have to consume you actually have to drop your, your sugars way, way down. as close to zero as possible, actual added sugar and things like that. Um, and you would cons compensate by adding a little bit more fat. But over time, 
the, the consumption of excess sugar and refined carbs will decrease oxygen to the brain. Okay, so that's probably one of the reasons also why when you exercise, you might feel better with your blood sugars because you got this surge of oxygen. And also it helps to temporarily kind of adjust your blood sugars. Also, the, the brain becomes atrophied. It gets small over time with too much sugar. I mean, what do they feed you in the hospitals? It's all sugar, right? It's just, it's insane. Um, when I broke my shoulder, when I fractured my shoulder, uh, I was in the hospital, and you can't eat before surgery um, for a period of time. So I was literally starving. And uh, so I get the surgery, and then I, am, I wake up, and I am just so hungry. And of course, what do they have? Jello, crackers, yogurt with sugar. I mean, I just ate it, and man, did I have a crash after that blood sugar crash. So I'm looking at this uh, situation, it's just like, no wonder uh, people um, have a lot of issues with going to the hospital and trying to get healthy, right? Now, um, here we go, atrophy and then starvation. So basically, sugar starves your brain of fuel or sugar over time because you'll develop a condition called insulin resistance, okay? So that's, that is what, what's going on. So what, what you want to do is you, you must do several things right off the bat. You got to cut out the sugar. You have to stop eating sugar, okay? Anything sweet, you have to cut it out, including honey and agave nectar and all that stuff, okay? That's number one. Number two, um, stop snacking between meals. Um, so those two things are the most important, regardless of what else you ate. I mean, if you just did those two things, you'd probably do very well. So what I like to do is in the morning, um, I don't eat unless I'm hungry. So like this morning, I went till 11 o'clock before I ate breakfast. Why? Because if you eat when you're not hungry, you'll spike insulin, and then all of a sudden it comes down, and then guess what? You're gonna be hungry again. You're gonna be craving sugar again, or, or just be hungry in general. So basically, eating creates more hunger. So uh, 11, so um, right now it's probably around 2.20, and uh, I'm not eating lunch and probably until 4. I'll probably go to 4 and I'll have my late lunch, and I'll probably just have two meals a day. And my body can do quite well on that. But the point is that you don't want to eat when you're not hungry, and then when you eat, uh, have protein, healthy fat. I'll put some links down below with specifics. And then you want to do um, a lot of greens, a lot of salad, a lot of vegetables, things like that. You don't want to do refined grains. Um, also, what kills people is the going out to the restaurants too often. You go to the restaurant, and uh, it's really hard to find food without them bringing the bread. Last night, I went to a restaurant, and the first thing they brought was the bread, okay? And they put it right in front of your face. Well, you're already going in there a little hungry, right? So it's really tempting for a lot of people. The bread, and then you have the dessert, and you have the wine, the whole thing. Uh, the point is that it's very dangerous to go to a restaurant unless your, your blood sugars are in control and you don't have a problem with blood sugars. Because look at when the blood sugars go low, you're not in your right mind. <laughs> you're kind of, um, you're not going to be as rational. You're not going to be as disciplined. So that's the, the, the danger of going to a restaurant because it's, it's too open for um, the wrong uh, options, okay? So anyway, I wanted just to create a video on this. I hope some of this uh, kind of put things in perspective, but uh, if you want to get your focus back, you have to fix your blood sugars. Thanks for watching.